Well, good morning, church family. How y'all doing? What a powerful and incredible time in worship. Hey, if I hadn't had a chance to meet you, Nat, me, ugh, meet you yet, there it is. My name is Bria, and I get to serve on staff here at Bay Chapel, and we're so glad that you're joining, joining us. And I just want to take a moment and just welcome those who are watching online, wherever you are. Hey, if you're in the room, would you just welcome those and help me welcome those who are watching? We're glad you're with us today. And if you're new here, we have been in a series that we've called For the Win. And in all honesty, I think this is Pastor West's amazing excuse to use as many sports analogies as possible. So, but I mean, if, if, if I'm honest, if I'm honest, I would not necessarily call myself an athlete per se. I played softball a couple years growing up and one year my dad actually forced my twin sister and I to play basketball and we hated it. We, we absolutely hated it. Have you ever seen the, the kid who shoots the ball in the wrong hoop? She is me. That, that was me. I did that. You know, maybe you as a kid, you always begged your coach, like, coach, put me in, please, please put me in. Both my sister and I were on the bench, like, please don't put us in. Please, coach, don't put us in. Thanks to whoever decided that every kid has to play. We were content on the bench. <laughs> we were content. So for those non-athletes in the room, I loved dance. So do we have any dancers in the house? Yeah, right? There's some dancers. How about theater kids? Theater kids, yes. Okay, there we go. I see a couple. How about musicians? We got some musicians. Yes, yeah, see? Some of us are good at other things. But how about the most underrated group of them all? Any mathletes? Math, yes, okay. I, I competed in a math bowl in my day, so yes. We're here, we're here. And I honestly think every one of us would agree, whether you are the athlete or whether you're trying to memorize all the lines, where you're trying to hit the perfect note or execute the, the correct play on the basketball court or on the football field, it doesn't matter what it is. But if we want to do it well, we have to practice. Is that right? Every time, no matter how, uh, what, whatever the situation is, whatever it is you're doing, we have to practice. I was actually speaking with one of our Zeal students the other day, and she's um, on a competitive dance team, and she was telling me how she's having to be at the studio like five, six days out of the week. And so I started to ask her, I said, well, when, when is your next competition? When are y'all going to be doing stuff? And she said, well, we actually don't have anything until March of next year. And they are spending all their time right now training and practice. Training and practice. Practice is where we learn the fundamentals where we get those specific skills trained in us, it's the place of preparation. And I believe for all of us, if we are going to win in this life, we need practice, everybody. We need practice. So I'm going to take us, uh, we're going to go to this story, and it's probably one of the most well-known stories in, in all of the Old Testament. Honestly, if you've never even grown up in church, you've probably heard the story of David and Goliath. And so we always hear this story, and we, just, we see this amazing knockout moment of David in all his courage showing up. And he's ready to take on Goliath, and he defeats this giant on behalf of the nation of Israel. But where I want to take us, and if you brought your Bibles, we're going to go to 1 Samuel 17. I want to take us to a different part of the story. Because oftentimes we go right into where David defeats Goliath, but I really think we do get just a small glimpse at how David had actually been practicing before this moment, before he approached Goliath, he had actually been practicing all along. You know, they were in battle. So David didn't just run out there. He actually had to get permission to go and approach and go up against Goliath. And so we're going to lean into the conversation of David trying to tell Saul, who is king, the general or coach, coach, put me in. Put me in, and here's why. So 1 Samuel 17, 
And we're gonna start at verse 34. It says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear that took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And, he and if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine, Goliath, shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will also deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the power of your transformative word. And we posture our hearts right in this moment. Will you speak to us? We thank you that it is your word that is alive, sharper than any double-edged sword. You know what the hearts of every one of us in this room needs to hear today. So we come ready. We make room for you. And it's in Jesus' name, amen. You know, I notice something really special when I think about this story or this part of the story. And the first thing I notice is that David's first giant was not Goliath. David's first giant was not Goliath. He had been here before, but it was with the lion and a bear. And I don't know anybody who's going out to fight any of those today either. And so that's what I recognize is that he had been up until this point training and practicing because the lion and the bear was the first opponent. And this was something that he would have never known or never anticipated to be a skill that he needed, yet he was confident. The reason he carried such a confidence and ready to go in and defeat Goliath was because he had been here before. The second thing I noticed is that his training is what led him to victory. He'd been using that sling and st those stones well before he showed up to the sword fight against Goliath. He was skilled. He knew what it took. He knew the bravery that it would take. He knew the faith that he had to have, trusting that the Lord would deliver him in the same way he had done with the lion and with the bear. And the last thing I notice here is that David's practice, it was in the everyday. This is a shepherd boy. He was just showing up to do a good job as a shepherd, not ever knowing and not ever realizing that he was training to fight a soldier's fight. And I wonder if you and I, if we think about it just for a minute, we would recognize and see that David and Goliath, this isn't just a story of victory, it's a story of preparation. It's a story of preparation. He was prepared for this fight well before he ever knew it was coming. And the truth is, you and I, we'd all like to see victory in our life in some way or another. But I wonder if we recognize or see the weight and the value of the everyday things that we do and how they could be preparing us or how they're actually hindering us. And if you think about the Goliath maybe you're facing today or the lion or the bear and maybe Goliath's down the road, I don't know. But are you actually prepared for it? Are we prepared for it? And so when you walked in today, Everybody, I'm going to say you walked into training camp. This is training ground today. And I believe that the coach wants to have us to look at some specific things in our life that are just every day that are actually affecting and impacting how we live out this life and whether or not we see victory or show up prepared to the fight. 
And so in the first place that I think we need to begin to examine today or need to take a closer look at and a long, hard look at is number one, it's our patterns. It's our patterns. Our patterns are shaping and forming us one way or another. The question is, are they shaping and forming us in the image of Jesus or something else? Our patterns, the things we do day by day, they are shaping and forming us, whether we like it or not. But the question is, are they shaping and forming us to look more like Jesus or something else? You know, when I was in sixth grade, my parents went through a, a divorce, and it was very difficult on me as a sixth grader. And in all honesty, I began to carry a lot of deep-seated anger. Um, I wasn't like an explosive, loud, angry person uh, or, um, you know, explosive. I just, I held it inside. And I became extremely, extremely bitter and resentful towards my dad. I blamed him for everything. And over and over, especially as a preteen teenager, if you talk to me about our relationship, I would just blame. I would speak negatively about it. And I realized that I was, there was a pattern there. There was a pattern there. But later on in life, after going through some therapy and getting some counseling, thank God for the counseling and therapy, and after going through it, Obviously, the Lord began to show me and do a work in my heart to be able to see it wasn't, he wasn't all terrible. And when I began to heal and began to grow, I realized I still had developed this pattern and had been continuing in the pattern that I had for years of speaking negatively about him or about our relationship. And this was something that I had to retrain myself in. I had to practice. And this was something that I knew that if I, if I am going to actually live out the healing that I've experienced on the inside, there are some things about my patterns that are gonna have to change. Listen, everybody, what we do reveals who we are. What we do reveals who we are. My negative, complaining, bitter, resentful heart revealed that I was a wounded little girl. I was wounded. And that showed and revealed itself. And I just thank God that he is, he's so good to heal us, but sometimes we, we have to retrain and recondition some of the patterns that we have in our life. And he wants to do that today. So if I think about it, I'm gonna just give you a few types of patterns for you to just consider. And these, again, your patterns can be healthy or unhealthy. In the story I just shared, they were unhealthy patterns, but some of us may hold some actual healthy ones. And so in the first place we can evaluate is our daily patterns. And this is our day by day, the routine. And I'm not just talking about, oh yeah, every day I wake up and have coffee. And maybe some of you may need to examine your habits in that way. But I'm talking about a little bit deeper than that. What are the patterns of your conversations? What are the patterns of the way you react to people? The day-by-day -day patterns of our life that are, that are revealing something deeper on the inside of who we are. Another type of pattern, there are family patterns. And that's real. These are the generational patterns of culture or your family of origin. For some people, maybe you're just like, yeah, my grandpa got mad all the time. My dad, he gets a little angry too. And yeah, I, I get angry too. And there's just this kind of generational ongoing pattern that you may notice. And you want to think about that. And the last type of pattern that I think we just in our minds, just examine its private patterns. And these are the hidden ones that very few people, if any, know about. What we do reveals who we are. And I think that you and I can just take a moment 
And in the same way, David was training in the day by day as a shepherd boy, not realizing that he would be soon coming up against a giant. There may be training in our patterns that need to take place so that we can be ready for whatever comes our way. Are you with me today? Yeah. So number one, it's our patterns that we're going to examine today. But number two, I think we have to examine our people. Our people. And this is one of those things is that I realize over and over that in the same way our patterns can reveal things, I think it's our everyday encounters with other people that can reveal some things about us too. And I'm not talking about just the, the nice ones. I'm talking about all of them. All of them. You know, Proverbs 27, 17 says this, iron sharpens iron. And one man sharpens another. You know, it does not say here, one faith-filled spiritual man sharpens another. No. While we may be sharpened, and sharpening may happen with people who do follow Jesus, but I believe just as much sharpening happens with those who don't. With those who don't. Sharpening may happen with the people we like, but they also have, it also happens with the people we don't. And if we examine the patterns in our life, but also the people, the way we've treated them, the way we've, we've responded to them, maybe the way we talk about them as I did, what is it revealing? What is it on the inside of you and I is it saying? I heard this story, it's actually, um, it was Pastor Tyler Garvey. This is actually Tiffany's brother. I heard him in a video share this story. And he said, an Amish man who was once asked the question, are you a Christian? And he turned, in response to the person asking him, he turned and he pointed at the house next door to him and he said, to answer that question, you'll have to ask my neighbor. Yes, yes. So I want you to think about your neighbor. Because we have, you know, different types of neighbors. We actually have our literal neighbors, meaning their house is in some sort of proximity or closeness to you. But we also have our life neighbors, meaning just their life is in close proximity to yours. In this space, right, we, do, we come to church week by week. We have literal or life neighbors in this room, maybe who you work with, maybe who you socialize with, all the people who you see day by day, and your lives are in close proximity to one another. But then there's also the ones who live around you. And if... I went and knocked on the door, and you don't get to choose which one I knock on. <laughs> if I go knock on a door and I ask, hey, are they, are they Christians? Do, do they follow Jesus? How has what we've modeled in our lives, how we've loved them, how we've responded to them, how will it lead them to answer? And I know this is, this is tough, this isn't easy stuff, but I think today, not in condemnation, but in a space where we can listen to the Holy Spirit to just touch on something in our hearts and touch on something today. I really have been believing and, and am in full expectation that he wants to speak. He wants to speak to us. So it's our patterns, it's the people in our life. But then number three, it's also our position, our position. And I want you to think about your life, where you are, the decisions you make. Somebody, somebody's calling the plays. Somebody's in that position of head coach, of leadership in your life. But the question is, is it the Holy Spirit or is it you? What is the position 
that you're standing in, that you're holding on to. You know, when I think back, again, I said I danced. And what we would do is we'd either have a choreographer or we have a team of us that would choreograph a dance and then we'd have to actually perform, perform the routine for our coach. And I just remember time after time, we'd perform it one time and she'd go, okay, again. And then we'd go back, get, get into position, start it all over again. And over and over, again, again. And obviously, as high schoolers, we were always annoyed by that. It's like, what, what do you expect from us? But I, I realized that never when she did that was she actually expecting perfection or looking for perfection. She, she was just looking to see if we were improving. Because she could see things that I could not see in the middle of the team, on the floor. She could see the person on the other side of the, of the floor who's two steps behind. She could see that we were all late in moving our head one way. She had a different perspective and she would tell us, hey, again, shift that. All right, again, shift that. But she wasn't looking for us to be perfect. Again, she was just looking for the improvement. She was looking to see that we were getting better. And I, I wonder if some of us sometimes we're in the room and we honestly might think, yes, I have mastered being a good neighbor. And maybe Holy Spirit is like, hey, again, love them again. Forgive them again. Speak life over them again. And he is not looking for you to be perfect at this thing, but there's more improvement. And his perspective on our lives is very different from the way we can see it and from our own vantage point. Yes, amen. Amen. Psalm 37. This is David, who we just read about. In verse 23, he says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. This is when Holy Spirit is head coach. He directs our steps. He delights in every detail of our lives. Though we stumble, though we might blow up at the kids, though we might withhold forgiveness, though we stumble sometimes, it's all right. It's all right because we will never fail. For the Lord holds them by the hand. That's a good coach. That's a good coach. And just right where you are, I'm gonna invite you. Would, you. would you actually just close your eyes? Because we are trying to make as much space as possible, not for you to listen to me, but to meet with the coach. And just imagine, imagine if you were, you're sitting in his office and you get some one-on-one -on -one time with the head coach. And I just want you to ask, ask the Lord, what do you want to say to me about the patterns that are shaping my life? What do you want to say to me about the way I show up in my relationships with my neighbors? Coach, what do you want to say about where in my life I'm actually standing in your position? And let him just speak to you there. All week, we've just been really facing some warfare coming into this Sunday. And I knew that God wants to meet with somebody here today. God wants to speak to somebody today. And I kept hearing, as, as I was thinking about this, I just kept hearing this line that the preparation, the practice, the training 
It's in the surrender. The preparation, the practice, and the training, it's in the surrender. David knew it wasn't in his own strength. He knew that the God who had delivered him from the lion and the bear would deliver him. He's speaking today. So if you would just continue and just listen to him, whatever he's pointing out. And if you would say to me, Bria, I know, I know for a fact that there are some patterns in my life taking me down a road that I shouldn't be on and I'm ready to surrender that today. Would you just raise your hands just so I know if you've got some patterns. Yeah, me too. And in the same way, if you would say to me, I know that there are some relationships and some people in my life that I need to surrender. Just so I know, would you just raise your hand? Yep, I see you. I see you. Be bold. And then the last one, if you would say to me, Bria, I know I've been the head coach of my own life. I've been calling the plays, I've been making the decisions, and I am ready today to surrender. Can you just, just raise your hands? Yeah, that's good. The worship team is gonna come in this moment, and, and as I was just praying, I felt like today, today was not gonna be a sit in my seat and stay quiet and be comfortable. But today was going to require me to move. And if for any reason you raised your hand, whether it's because you were ready to surrender some patterns in your life, because you're ready to surrender the way you've been showing up in a relationship with a loved one or in the way you treat your neighbor, if you're ready to surrender that position as the head coach of your life, in just a moment, without hesitation, I'm going to pray and I am going to invite you to come forward so I can pray over you. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you that you are here. You are speaking right now. You're helping them evaluate the patterns. You're helping us evaluate our people. You're helping us evaluate where in our lives we've been hanging in the position that belongs to you. And we surrender today, Lord. And right now on the count of three, I'm gonna count and again, without hesitation, without doubting, if you know he's speaking to you, move. Come forward, I'm gonna pray over you. One, two, three. Go ahead and move. I surrender. I want to know you more. I sing these words out. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender.
I just want you palms down, hold those hands out, palms down. And this is you letting it go. This is you releasing. This is you saying, God, I, le I lay this at your feet, I surrender. I surrender. And in the same way in faith as I pray over you, I'm gonna just have you just flip those palms up in a receiving posture. And Father, I speak now over every life, whether they are here physically in the front, but even just in the room, and I know you're speaking, I know you're stirring. I just speak now, Lord, that they would move in faith. Father, we confess today where we have been in the head coach position, but we give it back and we release it to you. We give you everything. I pray now, Lord, that if there are people in need of direction, they're in need to take a faith step to partner with this moment here today, will you give them the courage? Whether it is to apologize, whether it is to speak life, whether it's to start speaking positively about a situation going on, whatever it is, Lord, I thank you, you are giving them the next right thing today. I speak your blessing your understanding and your presence over them, Lord. And we thank you now that you are always stirring and always speaking. And so in faith, just one last time, all in the room, let's just sing that out again. Sing it out. I I just pray now, Lord, as we go from this place, that we would allow your spirit to speak to us more about our patterns, about the way we love our people and wherever we're in your seat, wherever we're in your position today. I pray now that as we go, Father, that you would protect every one of us, and that you would give us the right next step on what to do and what to say. And it's in Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Hey, if you continue to need prayer, we'll be here. We'll be here. Otherwise, you are dismissed.